Now, I want to do a quick little test, and I'm going to do this because I suspect, depending on how you guys followed along to this video so far, you may have run into an issue in the most recent step. So let me delete my Docker container. Uh, so let's do a Docker RM uh, node-app. Dash F. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this node modules folder on my local machine, which I don't need anymore because we're not developing on my local machine, and I'm just going to delete it. All right, so now that it's gone, I'm going to redeploy the container. I'm going to show you that we're going to break our application. Uh, so if I, it's now running, and if I go to um, my web browser, hit refresh, you can see it spins and it's eventually going to crash. Let's give it a second. There you go. So what exactly happened? Well, let's take a look. Uh, so if I do a Docker PS, let's see if my container's running. And look, that's the first issue. Why is our Docker container not even showing up on this? Well, when you do a Docker PS, it's only going to show you running containers. So let's do a Docker, I think it's PS minus A. If, yep. So this is going to show you all containers started or stopped. And you can see our most recent container, uh, our Node app container, and it said it exited uh, 30 seconds ago, which means usually if it automatically exited, it usually means something crashed. So if you want to take a look at the logs to see why um, something crashed, we can always do a uh, Docker logs, uh, and then you specify the name of the container. So it's going to give you all the logs for that. And this is going to show us some node or nodemon logs. And you'll see right here, it says nodemon not found. So what exactly is happening? We know for a fact that nodemon should be installed because we had everything working before. The only change we made was we deleted the local uh, node modules folder. Why should that impact anything? Because it was working before. Well, let me tell you what happened. So what happened was, um, you know, we, we create our Docker image, right? Where we copy our package.json file and then we run an NPM install. So at this point, when we run NPM install, it should install node mod for us. And it is in there. But then we copy um, all of our files, uh, which once again, not an issue, actually. I don't know why I kind of made it seem like it was, but we copy all of our files, all of our source code, uh, and then um, the command specified for the container is npm run dev. Now, when we go back to our Docker command that we used to actually create our container, we created a bind mount. So the bind mount syncs this folder with the slash app folder. And this is where the issue occurred because it's syncing this folder. Since there's no more node modules folder in this folder, it syncs that with the slash app folder. So it ends up overwriting the slash app folder and deleting the node modules folder in the slash app folder of our container because it doesn't exist in our local, uh, our local directory. And since we have a bind mount, it's going to sync those two directories together. That's the problem, right? Because once we deleted the node modules folder from our local machine, it will also delete it from our Docker container. And then without the node modules folder, that container has no idea what the hell node mon is. So how do we get around this issue? How do we prevent our local um, directory, our local folder from overwriting the slash app directory and deleting the node modules folder? Well, there's a simple little hack that we can do, and that is we're going to create a new volume. And we're going to create a volume that's called, um, there's a couple of different volumes, like I said, in, in Docker. A bind mounts one, we also have an anonymous volume. And volumes work based off of specificity. So we've got a volume on our container for the slash app directory. But we want to make sure that we preserve the slash app slash node modules. So we want to make sure this bind mount doesn't override the slash uh, node modules folder within the app directory. And the way we can do that is we could just specify another, um, uh, another uh, volume. So first of all, let me delete. Uh, our broken container. All right, and then we'll run that same command, but I'm going to pass in another V flag for another volume. And I'm going to say this volume, which is going to be an anonymous volume, is going to be the, for the slash app slash node underscore modules. This is a little hack that you can do to prevent the bind mount from overriding the slash app slash node modules folder because all volumes in Docker containers are um, uh, are based off of specificity. So even though this bind mount should sync with the slash app directory, we can see that we have another volume that uh, that references the slash app slash node modules folder. And you can see that since this is a longer path, that's basically more specific. 
So that's going to prevent this bind mount from deleting the node module folder. Basically, this extra line is going to say, hey, don't touch this folder uh, since it's a more specific, more, uh, it's a longer path, it's more specific, so it overrides the bind mount. The bind mount will still sync all of the other files, it just cannot touch the node modules folder. All right, so now if we hit enter, let's do a docker ps, and it should stay running. Let's just make sure it didn't crash, and it looks like it didn't. Uh, so now if we go to the website, let's hit refresh, it's there. Let's make a few changes just to make sure nothing else broke. We'll delete the exclamation points, hit save, and then hit refresh, and it looks like everything's working. Everything looks perfect so far. Uh, now, there's one thing I do want to point out. Um, so you'll notice that we do a copy where we copy all of our files into our container uh, at the build stage, and you might be wondering, well, do we really need to do that if we have our bind mount? And the thing is, the answer is yes, um, because the bind mount is really just for our development process. Uh, we only use the bind mount when we're developing because that's when we're changing our code. When we go to actually deploy in production, there obviously isn't going to be a bind mount because why are we changing our code in production? Uh, so we do we still need this copy command for when we deploy into production because there is no bind mount and we have to make sure all of our source code gets copied into the image for our production container.